Good evening. Thank you for letting me come into your home. Aren't you ready for some good news? Uh, let's go to God together in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for being the true and living God that you are. Thank you for blessing us in so many ways. Father, thank you for the blessing of becoming your children. Father, please be with us. Help us be obedient to you and faithful to you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ready for some good news? We have heard so much about the pandemic. We have heard so much about uh, crimes. We've heard about so much corruption. We've heard, uh, we, we've heard so much negative stuff. Aren't you ready for some good news? If you will, open your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 49, Isaiah is making a prophecy about the restoration of Israel. But I want to look at some things that he said and make some brief application. Let's pick it up in verse 13. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth. O mountains, into singing, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Watch the response. Can a woman forget her nursing child? that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb. Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. Your walk are continually before me. Notice the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted. Notice uh, about, about uh, Israel. As, as God has said, I, I have engraved you on my hands. God was not going to forget his people. The same God in the days of Isaiah is the same God that we live for today. If you will, open your Bibles up over to the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. Let's, let's begin with, um, with verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What, what can man do to me? Here it is, as, as God is saying to, to his people, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And so therefore, we can have confidence as God's people that the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? And then when we come over to Matthew chapter 28, I want you to notice the Great Commission and the latter part of it. Begin at verse 18 and reading um, through verse 20. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. What wonderful news. What good news that, that God is constantly with his people, that God will not forget his people, that God will not forget his afflicted, that God is, is with us. And so therefore, what, what, why fear what, what man can do with us, to us? God is with us. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then over here in the Great Commission, as Jesus is saying, I'm with you always to the end of the age or to the end of the world, as the King James renders it. What good news that God is with his people. It's not God that leaves. God is with us. When we go back to the book of Isaiah, just oh, we, we read in chapter 49. Now let's go over to 59. Because there we see some very somber news. Behold the land, behold the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. It, it's not God who leaves. It, it's people who leave God. And, and they go into sin. And, and sin then separates us from God. Oh, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. You know, we, we, have, we have a choice to make. Ah, uh, there is wonderful news. There is great news. There is good news for the children of God, that God is always there. God will never leave us nor forsake us. We don't have to be afraid of what man's going to do to us. Jesus has said, I'll be with you, you know, as he was talking to the apostles, but it applies to us. I'll be with you to the end of the world, to the end of the age. That is wonderful news. However, we have a choice to make. And that is that we can either be a child of God and, and faithful to him and God being with us all the time, or we can make a choice of not obeying and therefore sin is separating us from God. Or maybe once we were reconciled with God, we had become a Christian, but we've strayed away. It wasn't God that left, but people stray away and enter back into sin. Peter said about how tragic that is. That, that the worst state, in other words, if they go back into sin, the worst state is worse than, than if they never become a Christian. That, that it's the, the true proverb, like a dog that goes back and eats its vomit, or, or a sow that was washed 
goes back to wallowing in the mire. It's time for good news. And, and, and it's available. It's available to us if we will obey and be faithful to the Lord. Hear his word, believe it, believe in Jesus. Believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. Repent of our sins. Turn, turn, turn away from it. A, a, ch a change of focus, a change of, of mind that results in a change of life. That we will acknowledge, that we will confess, that we will make the vow that Jesus is the Son of the living God. And then to be united with him in baptism, being buried in the likeness of his death, burial, and resurrection, contacting the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all our sins, raising up to walk in newness of life, and having the promises of God. God saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, that's great news, wonderful news. But maybe you've rejected it. If you've not obeyed, why wait? Why wait? If you understand your condition with God, that you've never been obedient, why not now? You know, now is the only time that we are assured of. Even when this lesson started, that's, that's past. And even as you anticipate the end, that's not assured as far as time. Right now is the time that we have. And why not be obedient to God? If you've not, please, please contact one of the elders one of the preachers, oh, we would be honored to assist you in your obedience to the Lord. You'll raise up in newness of life, being added to the Lord's church because your sins are forgiven. You've got that promise from God and the promise that God is going to be with you. Jesus is going to be with you all the days of your life. If you're such that for some reason you have turned your back on the Lord and on that good news, again, it wasn't God who left. God is still there. It's people who Leave God. And God wants you to come home. God wants you to come back to him. And he makes that available through repentance and prayer. And if that's the situation that you're in, why not come back to God? Godly sorrow works repentance and you can come back to God in repentance and in a prayer. Please contact one of the elders. Talk, talk to them. Contact one of the preachers. Talk to one of us. We would be honored and it would be such a privilege to pray with you and for you, and that you would be reconciled to God, having your sins forgiven. 
That is good news. If you're outside of the Chattanooga area, please contact the Church of Christ in your vicinity. They also would be honored, be such a joy. You know, the good news is something we do not want to miss. Remember, God loves you. I love you. We love you. And that's the way it's going to be. I am resolved.